I welcome you all to another story session. Today we will talk about one of the beautiful stories from the Durga Saptashati or the Devi Mahatmya, which is a text that talks about the many forms of the Devi, of the Mother Divine, of Durga, and how that form, those forms came into existence and conquered various uh, asuras, demonic forces. And these stories have a lot of deeper meaning. There's a profound meaning behind them. And they are very relevant uh, during this time of the year because the Navratri is coming, the Sharadi Navratri, Sharad Navratri. And during the Navratri also, usually this text is recited, uh, especially during the Chandi Homa on Ashtami day, on the eighth day. So we'll look a little bit more at the profound meaning of the story of Mahishasura, one of the, the, the kings of the demons, and how Devi took a special form to conquer him and his armies. So we'll see that today. So we'll start with a small invocation. Om Garnana Antva Garnapati Gum Hava Mahe Kavinka Vina Mupamashra Vastamam Jeshtarajam Bram Hernam Bram Hernaspata Ana Shrandvan Utibhisi Dasadanam Shri Maha Garnapata Yena Maha Saraswati Namastubhyam Varade Kamarupini Vityaram Ham Karishami Sidhir Bhavatume Sada Namaste Sharada Devi Kashmi Rapuravasini Tvamaham Prarthaye Devi Vitya Buddhin Chadehime Guru Brahma Guru Vishnu Guru Devo Maheshwaraha Guru Sakshat Param Brahma Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Sada Shiva Samaram Bham Shankaracharya Matyamam Asmat Shri Guru Paryantam Vande Guru Param Param Om Ya Devi Sarva Bhuteshu Buddhi Rupena Sanstita Namastasyai 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 Namo Namaha So today we'll see the story, the beautiful story of how the Devi conquered the king of the Asuras. And the story goes as such that uh, there was a great king, ruler of all the Asuras, all the demons. And his name was Mahisha. That is why Mahisha Asura, the rest of the name come from. And what had happened is that he had actually, uh, he had done a great penance, a tapas, where he had prayed to Brahma, the creator, Lord Brahma. He was the king, uh, he was the son of the, the previous Asura king, whose name was Rambha. And it is said that uh, that king Rambha had a, had a child by um, by being together with a buffalo. So when King Rambha uh, and the buffalo came together, what was born from that was Mahishasura. And when he had become king, when he became king, when he inherited the throne from his father, it is said that he did a great uh, penance, a tapas, to please Lord Brahma. And Lord Brahma is like that. No, he loves it when people do tapas. So when after a long tapas, Lord Brahma appeared and he was very happy. So he said, you know, I loved your tapas. It was really awesome. Very nice. I want to give you a boon. Please ask. And Mahishasura said, okay, I would like to be immortal. I want immortality. So then Lord Brahma explained to him, he said, you know, that is not something I can give you because anything that is born also has to die one day. You know, even I am not 
free from from that that is the the law of of this creation so even as the creator i cannot escape that even one day i will have to dissolve so ask anything else so then he was thinking my shastra and then finally he said okay then my main purpose is that i should not be killed because i want to conquer the whole world all the realms so he said please give me this boon that i will not be uh, that it is not possible for any god any man or any demon to kill me that is what he said no god no demon and no man should be able to kill me because that has more or less covered everything so lord brahma said okay this i can i can bestow this on you and mahishasura was very happy because it's it's almost like being immortal and it is said that he started waging a war on on all the gods so what happened is that he with all the armies of the asuras met lord indra the the king of the gods of the devas of the suras in battle and because nobody could kill mahishasura he was so powerful the asuras also became extra enthusiastic they had more courage and the courage of the gods diminished because they saw that they could not kill him and finally the arm, army of the gods of the devas it was destroyed by all the asuras they won they won the war the battle so it is said that the devas had to you know they had to flee they had to run because they lost so then the asuras they they conquered the heavens and they started ruling there so mahishasura became like the new indra he was the one who ruled this this whole creation and uh, it is said that they took all the portfolios of all the gods we've heard this in some of the earlier stories no king bali also did a similar thing and all the gods were desperate they didn't know what to do they were miserable so it is said that headed by lord brahma himself they approached lord shiva and lord vishnu who were residing somewhere else they came there and they explained whatever had happened and they said you know you have to please help us please show us a way out of this this problem out of this misery because you know we we are having a lot of difficulties we are not able to do anything about this and what happened is that uh, they came here and then you know lord lord brahma and vishnu when they heard this they got very angry it is said their their face became all uh, fierce and they were frowning and that anger was welling up within them because this was a great injustice and then what happened they said is that out of the forehead out of the face the forehead no this is where the anger also manifests that place of the third eye so out of the forehead a great light burst forth it was like the their anger took a form took a form of intense light and from shiva's forehead from vishnu's forehead and then even from brahma's forehead it said that those lights they came together and they took a shape they took a form and then even from all the other gods all the other devatas who were present there it is said that that light a light came from their body and it all merged into one radiant form which they said it illumined the whole creation all the quarters of the of the creation and finally it took the form of a body and that to a female body and it is said that the the light that had come forth from shiva became her face and it said that the light or the energy that had emanated from lord yama which is the lord of death it became her hair beautiful dark hair and then it said that by vishnu's light the 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 energy that had emanated from vishnu burst forth from vishnu that became her arms and the light the energy from the moon became her breasts uh 
the light from Indra became her, her waist, like that. You know, Varuna, the god of, of waters, uh, it is said that became her thighs and her legs. And like that, the, the whole form took shape. So all the energy of the different gods merged into one beautiful female figure. And it is said that from all the gods, so they give a whole list in the, in the scripture, that which gods energy became her teeth, became her arms, uh, you know, became her, her eyes and her nose and all the different parts of the body. And finally, the whole manifestation that appeared was the Devi, Chandi, Ma Durga. And it is said that when they were all looking at her, this beautiful form, they got a lot of relief. The gods, they felt, they felt much, uh, much more happy and they thought, okay, you know, maybe she can save us. And it is said that Lord Shiva, he, from his trident, no, he has a, a trident, the Trishul. He said he took another, like from that, he pulled another Trishul, that energy of that, of his weapon. So his, his power, no, because the weapons of the different Devatas, they are a symbolism of their, their power, their Shakti, the energy and the, the power that they have in this creation. So from that, he gave that same power to her. He gave her a Trishul, just like his own. And he said in the same way, Varuna gave her a conch. It is said that Agni, the Lord of Fire, gave her a spear, special spear. Vishnu gave her a chakra, no? like he has the Sudarshana chakra, the disc. So he gave her also the same Sudarshana chakra, like his own. And Maruta, the god of the wind, it said gave her a, a bow, bow and arrow, just like he has. So like that, all the gods, they gave their weapon to her as well, like the same weapon, the same power, you can say, was given to her. Indra gave his Vajra that he has, the thunderbolt. And it is said that Yama, the Lord of Death, gave his Yamadanda, that is the, his staff of death. And like that, all the gods, the Brahma, he gave her, a, a, you know, the, what do you call it? the water pot, the Kamandal, and the Japamala. Uh, then Varuna, the god of the water, gave his noose, you know, the Varuna Pasha. So like that, all the gods, all the devatas, they bestowed their energy, their, their weapons, their power on this Devi. And what happened is that when finally she was there in all her radiance and she had all these, these weapons, you know, um, not only weapons also, there were so many things. They said she got beautiful uh, jewelry also, beautiful clothes from like from the earth, from Prithvi and from the, the Himalayas and the ocean of milk bestowed many jewels and, and precious uh, ornaments on her. Um, it is said that uh, Kubera, the, the god of wealth, he's actually Yaksha. So it said he gave her a, a drinking cup, a wine cup that was never that would never run empty. So you can drink unlimited amounts of wine. So like that, so many things were bestowed on her. And when she was there in all her glory, it is said that she gave a loud roar. She roared. And with her also was a, was a, a lion, on, which was her, her vahana, her vehicle, you can say. And when she roared, the whole creation shook. And when all the worlds, all the realms, they were shaking with that vibration of that roar, it is said the Asuras became uh, very upset. And it is said that all the Devatas, they, they, they cheered, they praised her, uh, they sang her glory, and they said that you will be victorious. No, they were blessing her. The Rishis also came and they bowed down to the, the form of the Devi. And seeing all this, Mahishasura got very angry. He said, we have to do something. So they said that he came with his whole army. He said, who dares to challenge my rule? I have already defeated these devatas, these gods. How dare they challenge me again? What has gotten into them? 
So he came in and he saw that the Devi was standing there. And she was so bright, full of luster. And the whole, the three worlds were shining, were, were lit up with her, her brilliance. And it is said that he uh, rushed up to her and he said that, you know, I, I have to do something about this. Because her form was so big, it is said that her, her, her hairs and her ornaments were touching the, the top of the, the sky, the heavens. And at the same time, the, you know, her arms were so big and so many that they filled all the, the quarters, all the different directions. So he charged with his whole army and he had millions and millions of, of horses and elephants and he had so many terrible asuras who were his generals. So this, the war, the battle began and they were saying that the, the Devi, because she had so many arms and she had all these different weapons from the different gods. So she was using all those weapons and all the asuras were fighting the demons. They came to her throwing their spears, their knives, the swords, raining arrows on her. And there were many terrible, uh, terrible asuras, great generals of Mahishasura's army. Uh, and they mention all the names in the scripture, like uh, Chiksura, Chamara, Mahahan, Udagra, uh, Asiloman, there are so many were there. And they came with, with millions of, of horses and tens of thousands of chariots and, and war elephants. And it was a terrible battle, they said. And it is said that they all tried to fight with the Devi, but with all her power and all her hands and all these weapons, she destroyed all of them. Thousands and thousands were uh, killed in that battle, rent asunder by her. And so they kept fighting the Devi, but they were not able to, to hurt her. They threw all their weapons, they tried everything, but she had so many weapons, so many arms, and she was so powerful, this Devi Chandika, Chandi, that she cut them all into pieces. And it is said that in the meanwhile, all the gods were praising her, the, the rishis were, were chanting mantras and, and praising her greatness. And the lion that carried her, he was also terrible. So he said just by him shaking his manes and uh, using his teeth, he would tear up so many uh, battalions of these terrible asuras. And it is said that uh, she would roar, you know, the Devi. Then so many uh, armies would appear and they fought the, the Asuras and they described the whole battle like uh, it's actually very interesting in the, the scripture in the Durga Saptashati so they said that how she killed so many thousands of them with her spear and with her swords and with her bows and arrows that some of them she bound them in the, in the lasso, in the noose the pasha and dragged them on the ground and it said some of them were uh, split in two by her sword, she would cut them into some of them she would smash in their heads. It's actually quite, uh, quite interesting. They have given so many details you know, that some of them were just uh, with the club she had that Gada, she would hammer them, beat them with a stick until they would vomit blood. It's a very terrible uh, scene is described there. Like it was a proper bloodbath. It was a terrible battle. And she would pierce some of them with her spears, with her arrows. And it is said that, that many of the, the asuras, they, they had their limbs cut off, their necks broken, uh, the cut off heads were rolling all over the place. And there were different body parts lying here and there. It was a terrible battle. And we'll not get more into those details. But it is said that the Devi will, would only grow more powerful. And the Asuras, the demons, they tried everything. And uh, the battle was going on and on. And then what happened is, after many of those armies were destroyed by her and by the lion, what would happen is that uh, the demons, 
the great generals, the, the Asura uh, army generals, they saw that their whole army was being destroyed. So they became even more angry. And it is said they, they rode up to the, the Devi, to Chandi, and they tried to fight her. And they started throwing huge rocks and mountains at her. And they came with all their, their, uh, their armies, but they were not able to, to do anything. It is said one after another, she killed all those great generals in battle. And finally, it is said that because he had no other choice, Mahishasura himself, he came and he charged. He, he directly went for the Devi. Now, he thought he was immortal, that he, nobody could kill. But what he did not realize that because she was neither a god nor a man nor an Asura. She was a Devi. She was a woman. And she was that divine Shakti, that energy. So when he charged, he fought with all his might. After he saw that one after another, all his generals had died, he, uh, you know, he, he came straight for, and he had the form of a, he can, could take the form of a buffalo, like a great buffalo. So it said he took that form of a buffalo and with his horns, he would toss mountains at her because he was so powerful. And then he came for her, but he was not able to, uh, to really hurt her because the, he would throw a mountain and she would rain so many arrows and spears and it would break uh, that mountain in the air so she would not get hurt. So finally, it is said that uh, she used her noose, the lasso, and threw it around him. And that way she bound him. So when he was bound, then he, he dropped his form of a buff. So when that happened, he quickly turned into a man with a sword. And then it said that she immediately used her arrows to... And it said that moment he turned into a big elephant. And it is said that that elephant was, was fighting with the lion that she was sitting on. And then finally, it is said that with her, with her sword, again, she cut... Uh, she killed the, that lion form. So he quickly resumed his original buffalo form. And again, he went at her, at uh, this divine mother, Chandika, with all his power. And it is said that while she was fighting him and while she was fighting all these demons, she was laughing. She had this terrible laughter and her eyes were rolling, drinking also from that cup of wine. Uh, that, that special divine cup, which would never empty. So she was again and again uh, drinking the wine while she was fighting because she had so many arms. And then what happened is that when the Asura, he saw that this, this divine woman is totally intoxicated and she is so strong, he know what to do. So it is said that uh, at some point he roared very loudly. He was so angry. And it is said that the Devi then told him that, okay, you keep roaring. No problem. Let me have my wine for a moment. Anyway, I'm going to kill you. So now you roar as much as you want because when I finish with my drinking my wine, I will slay you, I will end you, and then there will be no more roaring for you. Then the devatas will be the one who are roaring. They will be victorious. And it is said that having said that, she jumped on top of him, on the asura, and with her foot, she pressed his head to the ground and she, she uh, pierced him with her spear. Now, when he was cut, caught under her foot, you know, when he was stuck there, it is said that he tried to again change his form, his real form, you know, changing from the buffalo into his uh, normal form. 
but because he couldn't escape from under the foot of the Devi. So it is a, uh, if you see many of the pictures of the statues and the paintings of the Mahishasura and how she killed him, the Mahishasura Mardini, form of the Devi, he is still half buffalo and half man, his form. And she pierced him with a, uh, with a spear and then struck him with her sword. And this is how she finally killed him. And it is said that seeing that the whole demon army, they, they fled. Anyway, most of them had been destroyed, but they ran in all the directions. And it is said that the, the devas, the gods, they, they cheered, they celebrated, they praised her. Um, and that all the rishis, the sages came and they sang the praises of the devi. And all the Gandharvas came and they praised her and the Apsaras, they, they, they danced for her. And this is how it is said that Devi was able to overcome the great demon Mahishasura, who thought he was immortal and whom the Devas had not been able to conquer. And this is how she restored the balance in, in the three realms. And as we saw the story, it is quite, uh, it's quite terrible. You know, if you see the descriptions of how she would decapitate so many of the enemies, so many of the asuras, the demons, how she would uh, kill them and, and hurt them. But there is a very beautiful, deeper meaning behind this story. And that is also where it gets such a great significance during the festival of Navaratri. Mahishasura, the name, like we saw, he was born from the union of the Asura king, Ramba, his father, and a buffalo. Now, why a buffalo? Because a buffalo is a symbol of tamas, tamoguna, the inner, the great inertia. If you see a buffalo as an animal also, it really has that tamasic qualities. Like if a buffalo is going on the road, you can, in India, we can see this sometimes. You can try whatever you want, but it's not going to move. It is moving very slowly and it is very stubborn. It doesn't want to go anywhere. So if you're stuck behind a buffalo, you can wait for a long time. So it shows that when uh, that tamoguna, the tamas, when it becomes so strong in a person, you know, when he was born out of that tamas, which means that when that tamas, that tamoguna overtook the Asura king, the result was Mahishasura, that quality, that energy that was symbolized by Mahishasura. So even in our life, sometimes it happens that we are overcome by inertia. We have all experienced this. Sometimes you feel so dull, You've, you're not interested in anything. You become very insensitive. You know? And if you see also when people feel like that, even if you give them a solution to come out of that state or to, to fix their problem, they're not interested. Yeah. Even when you, when you feel like that, when you're so dull, so inert, and if someone tells you, okay, just come, you know, come let's uh, go somewhere or let's uh, you know, meditate or let's do some breathing techniques or let's go and, and go for a walk in the nature or whatever it may be, people, they're not interested. They say, oh, I don't want to. When that tamas is so much, they don't feel like doing anything. People, they keep on complaining about what is wrong in their life or what is not good or, or the problems they have. And even if you give them a solution, they're not ready to listen to that. They're stuck in that mode almost. And there's no enthusiasm. You don't want to take any initiative. You don't want to do anything to change the situation. It's like you know, this feeling where you're helpless. Oh, I can't do anything. Anyway, we can't change it. We can't fix it. And when that happens, when that tamas, that tamoguna becomes so strong, then all the gods are defeated. They become powerless. No? And the gods have always been a symbol for our good qualities, the good qualities that we have. So when the tamas becomes so strong, at that time, your good qualities also take a backseat. It's not that it's gone, but 
you're not able to, at that moment, you're not feeling it. Naturally, when you are peaceful, when you're happy, when your energy level is high, you may be someone who is very enthusiastic, who's very creative, who is very uh, concerned for other people, who loves to help others, or who is very dynamic. You may have all these good qualities, but when that tamas, that inertia becomes so strong, at that moment, all of these will, will go to the background. So that is what is meant when they said that when this Mahishasura became so powerful, he defeated all the gods. He took over all their portfolios. They were kicked out of, out of the, the heavenly realm. And how were the and the gods were powerless, they couldn't do anything. So then finally, what they did is they invoked the Devi, the Shakti. And Shakti means that energy of the consciousness. So when all the gods, all the devatas offered some of their energy, they contributed, they got enlivened. That is when the Devi manifested, appeared. So in the same way, it says that when you awaken all the aspects, all the different parts of your consciousness, that is when that the Devi manifests, that Shakti. Then that energy, the prana shakti, the energy within you, the life force energy, the energy of the consciousness becomes so strong that it can destroy all the negative tendencies, all the negative impressions, all the negative feelings, which are all those armies of all the, the soldiers and all the armies of Mahishasura, all his generals, all those demons, they are nothing but those different negative impressions and qualities and, and tendencies. So by invoking the Devi, the, the Shakti, that energy, we are able to conquer all those Asuras. And that is the significance also behind the Navratri. That is why in the Navratri celebration, we, we do some fasting traditionally, you know, which purifies the body. We do some chanting, which purifies the mind. You, you sing some bhajans, some songs, which purifies the emotions and the feeling level. We meditate, no? we listen to knowledge, and we do the yagyas, the great ceremonies, fire ceremonies and rituals to purify the space and the environment. So in all those levels of our existence are purified and all those qualities of the consciousness are enlivened. That is when after those nine nights, ten days, the final day, they say it is Vijay Dashami or Dashara which means the day of victory. When after going through that process, that energy becomes more and more and more pure. And finally, it is victorious over all the negative tendencies, all the demons. So they say the first three days of the Navratri are governed by Tamoguna, that is the Tamas. And they are ruled by the Adishtatri or the, the ruling energy of Tamas, which is Mahakali. She rules over the Tamas, the Tamoguna. And then from Tamoguna, when you have to come out first, you go to Rajas. So from Tamas to Rajas. So the Rajoguna is next three days, the fourth, fifth, and sixth day of the Navratri. And it is ruled by the Adishtatri or the governing, governing uh, energy of Rajoguna, which is Mahalakshmi. And then from Rajas, we go to Sattva. So then the next three days, the seventh to the ninth day, are governed by the Adishtatri of the Sattva Guna, which is Maha Saraswati. And then finally, it culminates in the Vijaya Dashmi, the day of victory. And that is why they say it is such an auspicious day to start anything new, maybe even the most auspicious day. But that only applies if we have gone through this process. Because the Devi will only be victorious if, if she has been invoked, if that energy has been kindled. So when we go through all those processes of the chanting, the fasting, the meditation, all of that singing, silence, then what happens? Our consciousness becomes so pure, so sattvic, that when from that space, from that heightened awareness from that 
enlivened consciousness when we take any sankalpas when we start any work when we take any step it will definitely the best be the best possible we will be most effective because in our perception observation expression in all these fields we'll be more effective we'll have more clarity of mind you have more energy and we've gotten rid of all those doubts and vikalpas and negative tendencies and impressions in the consciousness so we are very fortunate that uh, navratri is is coming soon on the i believe 17th of this month 16 17th it will start and then up to the 25th 26th depends on the place also the calendar they follow it will be the festival of navratri and we'll have these beautiful homas also online um, we can all watch that it'll be presided over by our gurudev shri shri ravi shankar ji beautiful different different homas and yagyas will happen to kindle and invoke these energies and pray for their blessings for the entire world especially in these difficult times that all the beings may be safe may be taken care of and we may all rise to a higher consciousness so i hope you all enjoyed this story of mahishasura mardini and some of its deeper meaning there are many details but it will take a lot of time to go into that at this point but some of the main main things we have covered and next week we'll have another session uh, so i'll share a few more stories from the devi mahatmya the durga saptashati where different forms of the devi destroy some of the other demons uh, that have been mentioned in the texts and again i'll also share some of the deeper meaning behind it it's very beautiful you see that each name of those demons is very significant and the context that it provides is very relevant even in our lives today even in this modern time so in advance i wish you all a beautiful celebration of the navratri lots of love and blessings om shanti 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 namaste jai